Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday, December 1st. Guess what? 25 more days to Christmas. Are you excited about Christmas? Let me know in the comments below. I know I am. And we have a special visitor here today. You want to see who it is? London hasn't been up yet, but it's her favorite thing. There it is. Elf. That's a note that he left. Pretty cool. I think she might be excited today. Check that out. We'll find out later. <laughs> so today, I want to read a book that I'm liking. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I'm going to read chapter one today. And we'll see where it goes from there. If you like it, let me know in the comments below and we'll keep reading. I'm about to teach another fear class. The classroom is empty. I am waiting for my new group of students to appear. My nervousness about teaching these classes disappeared a long time ago. Not only have I taught it many times, but also I know my students before I met them. They are like the rest of us, all trying to do the best they can and all uncertain about whether they're good enough. It never varies. As students enter the room, I can feel the tension. They sit as far as apart from one another as possible. Have you seen that in the classroom? I know I have. Until the seats begin to fill because of lack of space. They don't talk to one another, but sit nervously, expectantly. I love them for their courage to admit that their lives are not working the way they want them to work. And their presence in the class signifies they are ready to do something about it. I'm beginning, I begin going around the room asking each student to tell the rest of us what he or she is having difficulty confronting. The stories unfold. Don wants to change his career of 14 years and follows his dreams of becoming an artist. Mary Alice is an actress who wants to discover why she finds all kinds of excuses not to attend auditions. Teddy wants to go over his fear of aging. He is all of 32. Jean is a senior citizen who wants to confront her doctor. He treats her like a child and never gives her any straight answers. Patty wants to expand her business but can't make the required leap into the next step. Rebecca wants to confront her husband with things that have been bothering her. And this goes on. And so everyone until everyone story is heard, I am fascinated what happens during the go around. As each person shares from the heart, the entire atmosphere begins to change. The tension quickly fades and relief is expressed on everyone's face. My first students begin to realize that they are not the only ones in the world feeling afraid. Second, they begin to see how attractive people become as they open up and share their feelings. Long before the last person has spoken, the, a feeling of warmth and camaraderie pervades the room. They are strangers no more, although the backgrounds and situations of the class members vary greatly. It doesn't take long for the surface layers of particular stories to disappear. Opening the way for everyone to touch on a human level. The common denominator is the fact that the fear is keeping all of them from experiencing the life they want to experience. Do you have fears in your life? Let's read the book. The scenario above repeats itself in fear class, in each fear class, sorry. I teach at this, I teach, at this point, you might be wondering how one course can accommodate all the diverse fears reported by the class members. Their needs seem to be varied. It's true. They do seem varied until we dig deeper and look at the underlying cause of all their fears and everyone else's. Fear can be broken down into three levels. The first level is the surface story, such as the ones described above. This level of fear can be divided into two types that happen and those that required action. Here is a partial list of level one fears divided into types. 
those that happen, aging, becoming disabled, retired, being alone, children leaving home, natural disasters, loss of security, change, dying, or illness. List two is those requiring action. Going back to school, making a decision, changing a career, making friends, ending or beginning a relationship, using the telephone. Hmm, I remember that was a, a fear. Uh, asserting oneself, losing weight, being interviewed, driving. You might have a few of. You you might have a few you can add to the list. Do you know what your fears are? Let's keep reading. As I hinted earlier, you might feel alone if you set yourself some of the above or even all of the above. There are reasons for this. One of the reasons, pardon me, one of the insidious qualities of fear is it tends to permeate many areas of our lives. For example, if you fear making new friends, it then stands to reason. You also may be fear of going to parties, having intimate relationship, applying for jobs, and so on. This career, this is, this is made clearer by a look at the second layer of fear, which has a very different feel from level one. Level two fears are not situational. They involve the ego. Level two fears. Rejection, success, failure, being vulnerable, being conned, being helpless, uh, disapproval, loss of image. Level two fears have to do with your inner states of mind rather than exterior situations. They reflect your sense of self and your ability to handle the world. This explains why generalized fear takes place. If you are afraid of being rejected, this fear will affect mo almost every area of your life. Friends, intimate relationships, job interviews, and so on. Rejection is rejection, wherever it is found. So you begin to protect yourself. And as a general, as a result, greatly limit yourself. You begin to shut down and close out the world around you. Look over to look over the level two list again, and you'll see how any one of these fears can greatly impact many areas of your life. Okay, so that's it for today. There's level three and a few more, but obviously I don't read all of it in one day. But thank you for watching, guys. Or shout out to my favorite people, Rita. Love you. Joy. Hey, RJ. Hope your uh, Facebook Live and 99 Days goes well today. Uh, Jake, thanks for watching. You're always on. Hi, Roxanne. Hope you're doing great. Uh, Steve Talk, glad to see you. Thank you for liking my videos and watching me. Steve Sims, I hope you're doing good out there. And Jesse Talk, thank you very much for watching. You're awesome, buddy. Keep up the good work. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.